Hello everyone, my name is Phoenix. I'm the legal advisor for Exceed the Bar. We are a company who specialize in legal advisory or providing legal advisory and business psychology services. Uh, one of the services that we offer is to tutor law students and uh, to guide them through the various LLB modules. Um, we groom people for careers in law uh, and we also offer legal recruitment, uh, law recruitment to place candidate legal practitioners, uh, that is, uh, you know, pupils, candidate attorneys, um, in suitable positions. Our content is supplementary and complementary to all university uh, LLB degree modules. The preamble to the Constitution of South Africa lays out uh, several of our country's visions, but amongst these uh, visions is the imperative to free the potential of each and every person in this country. Uh, we recognize the potential of every person and we want every law student in particular to do well in their careers. Uh, to this end, we will seek to sharpen your legal prowess, your knowledge, your skills, and to guide you through your studies to a full uh, in-depth understanding of law. We will also help iron out any problematic subject areas that you may encounter. Uh, our offering includes practical visual skills and things that you may not be taught at law school or university. Our materials are loaded with tips and efficient ways of processing things in law. As part of our post-study services, we endeavor to offer law firms and their principals with best matched uh, students readily chiseled for their articles or pupillage and to place students on a solid footing to a career in law. You can browse our website at www.exceedthebar.com. Uh, our contact details are included at the end of this particular workshop. Thank you for joining us. Right, let's get right into it. This is a video on how to get organized for study and your career in law. So remember, this is setting you up, not just for your studies to do well, but to do well in your whole career. As we said in our first video, 90% of law is admin. Let that sink in. <laughs> The best lawyer is the most organized lawyer. And I know a lot of us hate admin because it just sucks. It's time consuming. It can get complicated. You have to really have a very rigid, um, uh, systematic, methodical uh, ability to implement a good admin system. So in order to administrate your knowledge, um, that is in order to study, you need to just develop these skills. So I'm going to give you a couple of very good tips. Number one is you need to develop your own system, one that shapes you for your career and keeps university and module admin under control. Right, module admin, I mean your lecturers, your professors, your university itself are going to send you umpteen uh, notices and tutorials and this and that. <sighs> Just file it. So what I'm talking about is to formulate a structured filing system that takes care of both your university progress as well as prepares you for your career. And also lay out your LLB chronologically and add module files relevant to each semester. So we're talking about on your computer, you're going to be making fold, uh, folders and files. And you're going to uh, Put them systematically so that you can populate it with various of the year's information that goes into there. <clears throat> um, remember paperless is the future so I mean we're talking digital we are a digital society so you want to reduce your carbon footprint that's lawful <laughs> think about it but um, you need to go paperless so you need to develop all the kinds of systems that will make things paperless. In the olden days we had these massive filing cabinets with files in and things would just get misplaced and misfiled and 
if you didn't know where you filed something properly, you'd have to go through each and every folder. And sometimes the drawers would get heavy and topple the cabinet over and you'd have all sorts of things. So you don't have that with a paperless system, a digital system. So digital admin is what I'm going to be uh, uh, skilling you up in. And there are three components to it. The first component is develop a freaking filing system. Okay, and when I talk about a filing system, this is what I'm talking about. So have a folder for your career admin, a folder for your university progress, and a folder for your LLB subjects. By the way, your career admin folder, why I've called it that, you will, you will see there's a couple of subfolders in there, case law, court practice, drafting, litigation, foreign, international, national law, regulations, research. You are, in effect, building your own digital law library. And this will be for your future self is going to thank you for it, as I said. Um, well, here you will add five chosen subjects per semester. So just, you know, law is about being methodical, factual, chronological. Right, so if you get into the, the most basic of filing schemes from, from the word go, right, you know your LLB is going to be about a four-year degree. So put the year one, two, three, four. Obviously, you're not going to populate year one stuff in a year two folder. But uh, break it up into your semesters or your modules or your year courses, however your particular university has structured your, uh, you know, studies um but this this is how i do it and it's very simple you can just go create the folders and files although there's nothing in them and then wait for stuff to populate it secondly you have to maintain di uh, healthy digital habits and we're going to come to those habits just now but this is number one part of forming your digital habits and guys don't forget to make monthly backups um, we live in a insecure world where malware and things like that is up and if your system crashes because of a malware incident you're going to be crying so make monthly backups back up to the cloud back up to a, a external hard drive back up to a survey if you're that privileged but you know do your backups so the idea in creating these, this kind of filing system is to save time. And by the way, you can save these within your My Documents folder or you can save it on your desktop, whatever makes it most accessible to you. Uh, and you've got to be on top of your game. Uh, this will help you know where to find your stuff without having to control F, search, uh, computer, please tell me where I filed this freaking file. Yeah you can just be on top of it straight away. Um, and also create templates for standard things like assignment, sources, subject admin. We do give some templates in our um, various uh, modules that we are presenting, um, or rather as uh, complementary to the video thing that you watch, we do give certain from time to time. You will see, just it, it'll appear in your user account. So once you've got these basics in place, these filing basics, populate each folder with relevant data, like duh. You're not going to be putting um, a case law on Johnson versus McKenzie uh, and filing that under legislation. I mean, if you do, okay, co. <laughs> but um, a well-structured admin system is the product of a well-structured mind and thought process. This is an asset to any legal mind. So what we are doing essentially is we are creating subconscious structures within your mind that will aid your career. And to be an effective legal practitioner, you need to have a well-structured mind and thought process. If you are scattered and all over the place and you don't know where you filed stuff, but you know your work, that doesn't matter. You need to get the authority for it. Um, 
this is one way of doing it. So again, I'm coming back here. Here's another folder that I created for case law. So under case law, remember, we've got different courts that hand down different judgments. So I've structured it there. There's your con court, your equality court, your high court, all the various divisions of the high court per, per uh, province. Um, and so what do you think we are going to be filing in here? Of course, we're going to be filing relevant case law that was handed down uh, by any of those courts. Um, the case law folder in your career admin can be subdivided like this to find cases decided in the various courts. And then also, guys, you can create sub sub folders. So, for example, and uh, let's say the North Gauteng Pretoria Division of uh, over there, you could put dates. So you could put like 2018, 2019, 2020 cases. You get the point. It's easy for you to get stuff chronologically and alphabetically within those chronological orders. Within the lower order folders like North Gauteng uh, Pretoria, uh, you could create more folders for each year, as I've just said. Uh, save the PDF judgments by their citation. So, you know, we if you do our course on ACE legal research, there's the Oscola method. Uh, law does not use the Harvard method um, of referencing. So we, we're going to save it according to its Oscola citation. Right, and that you can basically, if you're quoting from that judgment, you can just right click and copy the uh, name of that particular PDF and paste it into your bibliography. And there's it, it's sorted. You don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. Um, that'll make it easy and quick to quote particular case law. Um, in our year subjects, so years for example under year two, I've put semester one, semester two, and I've populated it with the modules that I did in those years. Um, you just populate the relevant data into the relevant module, and that makes it easy to access, access the module uh, that you're currently studying. Just guys, please make sure that you name and file your stuff correctly. So the basis to creating a filing system is just to use your own initiative when devising it. Uh, the trick is to be ordered and structured and then get into that habit and deliver at your best and most proficient levels of law. Whilst I was doing my law degree, everybody was on this law, law group saying, hey, we can't find this case we, the, and uh, this law and whatever. And I'm like, oh, give me a sec. And I just went and quickly clicked on the relevant file and find it, found it within literally seconds. And then I could share that with everybody. Um, and the same goes for the rest of the folders in Career Admin. So you should, for instance, under National Laws, create your own folders for acts that you refer to that are promulgated. Again, label your PDFs accordingly. Simple. Uh, you also need to keep populating these folders with the relevant files. And I stress that the relevant files, because it's so easy just to go and file something, drag and drop, and Oops, I forgot where I put it. So you will have to rename many downloads that conform with your admin system. Um, name the files as if you are compiling a list of sources. It's a little bit of work, but just imagine it's the same kind of work that you're putting into your, your bibliography or list of sources every time you do an assignment or exam. But this is just going to save you a hell of a lot of time because you can now replicate it for several assignments. So if you quote, there's a common source to several assignments, boom, you don't have to go waste time, uh, as I said, reinventing the wheel. So it's advisable to have the following folders included in every module you study. So you can kind of like create a folder template, if you like, that you can copy from year to year. And that is the, the basic structure of the stuff that you're going to populate. Having these will standardize your approach to every subject to keep your same thought patterns in check. So form good habits. So here we go. Here's an example from constitutional law. The basic folders that I keep under there are study material, resources, study notes, assignments, exam, 
pass it to notes. You don't have to name, uh, uh, label it, accord, um, put numbers to it there like I did. I just do that because it uh, makes sense for me in order of priority. Um, and then when we splay those uh, files open, you'll get there that there is journal articles, prescribed acts, prescribed case, law textbook, study guide, tutorial letters, you see. So everything can be filed easily and categorically, if you like. Um, and I've splayed it open for everything else there. There's your resources, your study notes, your assignments. Very good for your assignments because then it keeps you on track. Then, of course, your revision and exams. Um, so you just keep on populating each of these fo uh, folders as soon as the material comes available. And you do this for every subject that you study. So as I said, create a file or folder template and copy and paste it into every uh, subject or module that you've listed already. Then you just spend your, your life populating it as you study and, and it's quick. Uh, file all your recommended prescribed and self-interest journals are over here. The same for statutes, gazettes, oh, I can't talk today, regulations, vital to fort, fort con <laughs> decisions, court, con court decisions. I think I must have my coffee, hey. Uh, it includes a separate folder for case summaries. It's up to you. Um, sometimes you get a 501 tutorial in your study guide, especially at a place like Unisa. And a 501 is in actual fact your study guide. So then you would rather place that under textbooks and study guides. Um, and of course, create as many folders as you like. Uh, your lecturers may provide additional resources, calculation summaries, PowerPoints during the year. Stick it under resources. It's optional but advisable to stick in the news and current trends. Uh, I just, if I see a, a something uh, newsworthy that is uh, re relevant to my particular study, um, I'll just PDF that from the net and then pop it in there. Uh, study notes. Hello, here is where you wrestle with the module. <laughs> Okay, so most module contains self-assessment exercises and activities. Uh, keep your case summaries here. They are work in progress, but you'll also place them above discussions with lecturers and fellow students. Uh, your end notes there go into your exam revision. Remember, we've just done create the video on creating notes. So your text notes, your mind maps, your tabulations, everything there, stick that under exam revision. And when it comes to revising for exams, you're just going to open your exam revision file and go through those handful of documents instead of having to go reread or restudy and re-note everything. If you download any podcast, videos, or webinars you attend, you must file them here. Just name them appropriately, obviously. Uh, there's folders for assignments that are due. Um, and most of the advanced subjects in law have portfolio exams. So especially when you get to third year, fourth year, you're going to be getting more and more portfolio exams. A primary of those is um, your research uh, module uh, or research methodology. Uh, those go in there. Um, always have a good idea it's always a good idea to gather past exams and work through old papers so we keep them there um, I don't like distributing past exams simply because laws have changed so the answers for those past exams have changed so the new precedents have been set um, you can go through them you know uh, a lot of the online exams now are purely multiple choice they're randomized so it's very difficult to uh, spot the answers which brings us back to the point, it's best that you make the knowledge yours, own it, right? You need to understand it yourself thoroughly. Uh, and of course, there the university will send notices, blah, 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 and just file it there so that it doesn't get uh, distract you within the actual course content of what you're studying. I 
I also recommend that for degree admin create a progress chart in your career you are going to probably create some or other timeline Gantt chart um, you know there are all sorts of applications for that in order to keep track of your cases and when things are due and how long you've already given the opposition to answer and file and whatever but this keeps you up to date on your performance and as well as what remains to be done so there you can see um, you're welcome to copy this into your own spreadsheet I divide my degree into you know per year which semester we're talking which subjects I did what their codes were and I've just labeled it there 1 to 40 so that I know by the time I get to number 40 I've finished the, the LLB then I've got A1, A2, A3 that's assignment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 whatever plus your year mark your exam mark and your final mark so this is just to um, give you a broad overview of where you're at what you've done how you've performed and it serves as uh, some sort of incentive and encouragement to keep on going and it also shows you where you've done bad not so good uh, you know where you need to um, redeem yourself in the future subjects that you're about to undergo so the great thing about a spreadsheet is you can make formulas to calculate the things in each cell you could also maybe highlight so if you populate uh, a 90 into introduction of law uh, an 80 into historical foundations a 60 into law of persons uh, then what I do is I highlight my distinctions that's anything above 75 in yellow and all 90 and above will be in gold because that's like really freaking well done pat on the back etc it's up to you make your low marks or the failures if any I hope you don't uh, I hope none of you are failing if you fail freaking contact me because we need to sort that out of course your subjects may differ from these and that may also be done in a different order but this chart is just for illustrative purposes the great thing about such a spreadsheet is that you can make formulas to calculate the things in the cell so my n cell formula down there under final mark kind of correlates where I am in the degree so I'm summing up the entire marks in the column m2 to m41 and I'm dividing by the number of modules 40 so that will keep you on track um, if you want your average for for example the semester one then just divide it by five or, or whatever um, in English this means you add up all the final marks and divide by the number of subjects if you average over 75 percent you will graduate cum laude provided you have not had to repeat any exam some universities uh, I know especially during COVID waived that requirement because hello we're dealing with a pandemic uh, I think that is self-explanatory more or less coming now to time management it's vital for both your degree and in practice so learn to work with dates and deadlines don't just join team last minute because ye gaan jou gaat sien trust me so again in my spreadsheet my excel i've created and by the way if you're on mac you mean you will be using numbers instead um, but uh, there's assignment module due date type in the mark um, you can see i've highlighted them in different colors um, also everything is in chronological order so become a disciplined legal practitioner from the word go chronologize everything if that's a word my yellow highlights represent what was submitted as done so if you've already submitted your assignment or whatever I highlighted yellow the green I highlight for you know urgent things uh, assignments that are due that I'm uh, possibly busy writing those assignments the orange is for yes as this is just around the corner I need to keep an eye on the date because these are also soon due and red is the exams keep your eye on the date because it comes faster than you think and this is in the order that it's written note that the type of exams or assignment 
so you know what to expect and can estimate how much time you prepare for it. So there we've got portfolio exams, we've got written exams, you may have MCQs, whatever, you will just abbreviate it in this that you know what to expect. Then you also don't always have to go and refer constantly to your tutorial or post a, a stupid comment on or, or request on your WhatsApp group. Uh, because you've got the, the info at your fingertips and this is what makes you an independent, successful, uh, well-structured legal practitioner. Coming now to the final section of this uh, course, how to study law, you need to develop good study habits. Study habit number one never freaking give up there's dark days in law trust me you want to tear your head out and just give up but don't do it once you're disciplined at law you will enjoy it you will be able to do it with ease speed and efficiency so key to everything is time management right and there are five components that i'm going to quickly fly through on time management admin environment relationships commitments studies Relationships, guys, you guys are fresh out of school. Uh, even those who are, uh, for example, married, they've got kids. And trust me, on the LLB program, I take my hat off to a lot of women who are single mothers, who are single-handedly raising their kids without maintenance from their spouse. Plus, they've got to work and they still study at the same time. Sure, that is like something to be really um, proud of and put on a pedestal. So you need to manage your time with lovers, your family, your kids, your pets, and your friends. Everybody wants a piece of you. That's just life, especially if you're very popular. But when it comes to studying law, you're going to have to put some boundaries and parameters in. So think about that. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Environment, you've got noise, clutter, study space. <laughs> yeah, it depends on you. We're all different. But um, I like to work in a very um, clean, uncluttered, structured environment with a cool study space, uh, adequate lighting, uh, and as little noise as possible because noise distracts. Commitments. You've got commitments to family, your work, your social life. Um. You need to streamline those commitments and make sure what counts because what counts is your degree right now that is a priority in your life and the rest can just sit on the side sidelines and cheer you on but they everybody needs to understand that you are studying law it's a heavy subject and you need to maximize your time for it uh, without compromising any of these commitments and relationships and of course your health is a commitment guys it's so easy just to sit behind a desk all day and study. But yet it's not because your body needs exercise. So you have to make time. Go for a walk. Go for a run. Go to the gym. I don't know whatever you're on. But you need to do something. If you're a little bit older and you're not uh, uh, that uh, uh, physically active, you need to do something. All right? When it comes to admin, you need to research, stay current, and cultivate your interests you need to specialize in law one day there's no generalist in law uh, generalists don't make a lot of money in law but you need to be able to s specialize in some or other aspect of law so seek out those interests we have some uh, psychology tests and things that can help streamline your thought processes on your interests um, just contact us and then finally, your studies. You are bombarded with timelines for assignments, reading, notes, revision. Don't forget all of these. So all of this requires time management. So it's up to you how you are going to manage your time. And then the exams. So don't leave everything till last minute for the exams. Be constant at it. Constantly apply what you're learning. And I promise you, your exams will be a breeze. 
So the takeaway is to make magic happen, focus on what is important whilst getting your degree done. Sacrifices will be made, but find quick, easy ways to do things. And ironically, the busier you are during your studies, the more time you will have for everything, uh, AKA multitask. So the best way to be a lawyer is to habitize making notes and summaries. Don't you just love the way I make my own words up, habitize? But you get it, it's a verb. Being of a habit is a verb, not a noun or an adjective. Be methodical, systematic, disciplined. Put on a mindset that you are the greatest problem solver ever on this planet. Yeah, you have to make that yours. Own your knowledge. So as a final word, there are plenty of articles on developing the right habits to study. We can discuss this at length. However, if this workshop, uh, How to Study Law, has taught you anything, it is to apply the skills that we offer and to make this routine. And routine means habit. So habit rules. Number one, never cram. Don't do it, guys. Never procrastinate. Get off your lazy mm -mm -mm asses and just freaking study. Three, make time to study because it takes time to study. Four, set a realistic goal to reach in each lesson study. For example, I must finish this chapter within one hour or I'm going to give myself five minutes to do this, whatever. Reward yourself for reaching each goal. So go out with a friend, punish yourself if you fail to reach your goal, like don't go out, whatever. Just don't kill yourself, guys. Six, tackle the hardest subject first and the questions first. And then switch off to distractions. So guys, no Facebook, Twitter, TikToks, in Instagram, no social media, no WhatsApps, no phone, no PlayStation. Yeah, guys, you cannot just go play World of Warcraft and uh, whatever other games you play, Ferrari, Grand Prix, whatever. Don't even look at them. Reward yourself with them. Once you've reached your goal, but don't even look at them. I, in fact, took myself straight off to social media because I found it, it is a vacuum that just sucks you in and there is no end. You see good video after good video and you're like, hey. and by the time you blink your eye, an hour, two, three hours have passed and you're like, oh, what the fuck? I don't, haven't even studied. And then you fall behind. It's hard to catch up when you fall behind in law. Spend your weekends wisely. The truth is when you have more time, and that time could be used to do a little bit more study. Get sleep when you're tired. A tired mind does not function, period. Let that sink in. But don't also go make it an excuse now to sleep. <laughs> All right, stay inquisitive. Have an inquiring mind. Ask questions. Learn everything you can. Have that passion for law. Right, get your admin in order, stay on top of it, and don't ever uh, procrastinate or, or give up on it because admin can pile up overnight and it can take time to go and sort and file. Just do it when you get it. Always file. It's a lawyer's life, even in practice. Right, you file at court, you file at your office, etc. It's practice. Make it practice, make it habit. That is what counts. Thank you again for uh, watching this video. Please also share this video far and wide. Um, uh, there are a list. There are a list of our uh, subjects that we are presenting. They're not all up on our website yet. They will be populated hopefully before the end of the semester. But those that are available, please feel free to sign up for. Uh, there are, of course, free booster courses, which are very important to you and your career. Um, thank you for watching this. And please click on your next video, which is ACE Legal Research or How to Read and Summarize Case Law Fast. Up to you. Thank you.